In this video, I'm going to demonstrate Azure Event Hub by deploying three separate apps that are able to communicate with each other through the Event Hub. It's a series of apps that I've written in Spring Boot with Kafka and then converted to Event Hub, but really don't think of programming language. This could be a C-sharp application, could be just about anything. Just three apps that I happen to have I was able to convert. So first one is My Plant Diary, and that one allows us to catalog plant specimens that we've planted in our yard. So latitude, longitude, description, so on and so forth. And when we add a new specimen, it's going to put an event on the photo in Event Hub. A photo processor, which is an application we'll deploy in this video, will listen to that photo in Event Hub. And when it receives something on that Event Hub, it knows it has some work to do. Now, normally it would take an image and watermark and resize it, but I wanna not worry about disk space in this video series, so I'm disabling that. And I'm just gonna have it read from the Event Hub and write to the Event Hub. So the photo processor wakes up and starts doing work when it sees that there is an event on the photo in Event Hub. The the output can be one of two or three things. Number one, if everything is successful, it writes it to the photo out event hub. If something went wrong, it writes it to the photo exception event hub. On the other hand, if it hasn't finished processing, it hasn't written it to either event hub. So simply by seeing where a photograph lives, or in this case, a unique identifier of a photograph, seeing which of these event hubs it lives on lets us know the state of that photo. And that's the job of the dashboard to assemble all of this together. It will read from the photo in event hub, photo out and photo exception, and determine from that, was the photo processed successfully? Was it not processed successfully? Or has it not been processed at all? I mentioned that in a previous video, we deployed the first of these applications, which is the diary application. So I'll point you to that video and I'll put that video link in the comments. I won't redeploy that because I've already done that. I will show you a preview of what we're about to do though. We're about to deploy this dashboard, which is the one that I just showed you in that diagram. Now watch what happens when I take this description and I say something like Fuji apple tree. Now I hit submit. And you'll notice this is plantdiary.azurewebsites.net. It will take just a moment. If we come over here, we see app dashboard 2011, so on and so forth, .azurewebsites.net. So a completely separate application here, which happens to share the same event hub. When I refresh, you'll notice that we have a few new items on our dashboard, the unprocessed and the exception. So that's what we want to get to in this video. The dashboard application is ridiculously simple and actually is a really good look at how to use the Java Collections framework to do union, intersection, difference, so on and so forth. I have a whole separate video, uh, video series actually, that shows how I made this dashboard application, but I'll give you a quick overview right now. First of all, we have a DAO with three listeners on it, photo in, photo out, and photo exception. Hopefully that sounds familiar, and you notice that the dashboard only has yellow lines going to it, which means it's only reading from the topics or event hubs, not writing anything to a topic or event hub. Now here's where things get neat. We go to the dashboard service, and we see three methods, get processed photos, get unprocessed photos, and get exceptions. Each of these is simply using that collection to determine where each photo should be. So forget exceptions, it simply reads from the exception topic. To get unprocessed photos, we simply do a difference operation where we start with photo in and subtract from that photo out, and that tells us what is in photo in that hasn't gone to photo out. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna add one more line to this. Let's remove exception photos as well, because really those have been processed, just not processed successfully. So now get unprocessed photos means these are literally things that are waiting to be processed. Now think about that. If that's a humongous collection, that's where we can use some of Azure's auto scaling and say, once the backlog gets this great, let's open up another checkout lane and let's start processing photos through that other checkout lane. So a little bit of analytics we can do there. Now for the get processed photos, we do an intersection. We take a look at what's in photo in and what's in photo out, and all of those were processed successfully. So go ahead and save. We go up to the controller and we see that it is simply taking each of these three collections and then emitting them out to the dashboard page. 
As a matter of fact, I'm going to consolidate endpoints. So this is just the default endpoint that we see when we log into the app. I have already set the application.properties as needed. And as I described in the previous video where I converted a Spring Boot Kafka application to essentially an Azure event application. So I have all of the connections set up properly here. All we need to do now is deploy. So right click Azure and deploy to Azure Web Apps. Let's go ahead and make a new web app for this because I want this to be independent. So we'll call it Plant Dashboard. Uh, platform, we can go with a Java 11 Tomcat 9. We definitely need more settings for one huge reason. And that is we need to make sure that we're using the same resource group because that's what contains our event hub. Everything here looks good. I'm going to change the plan to one that I've set up already, which is free. And then we choose OK. Ah, uh, shoot, looks like someone else took my name. So we'll say plant dashboard, we'll say my plant dashboard. And now we'll choose OK and run. This will take a few moments. So I will pause the video a few times and speed it up a few other times as it's working through this. At this point, the application's built and now it is creating our new application service and deploying it. And things look good. We have deploy succeeded, restarting web app, and deployed successfully, and then a URL. Because I deployed to root, we just need to hit this URL. We don't need to do a slash or anything like that afterwards. Now, it does automatically open this up in a browser, and it's common for it to start at this 403 screen, just as, as it is restarting. The thing to do then is simply hit refresh. It will take a few minutes as it is loading Tomcat, in this case, and deploying our application. Once again, this demonstration uses Tomcat and Java, but it's agnostic of programming language or environment. We're really looking at Event Hub. So C-sharp application, if you deploy it, you're going to get a very similar behavior. And the application is started, which is great news. We can add something from our My Plant Diary microservice. And once again, I'll point out, if you look at the URL, these are two totally different applications. First, though, let's take a look at our event hub. There are some metrics that we can look at here. You can see messages, and there is a little bit of a lag. You can see some from when I was just prepping the video yesterday, and then today some previous videos are made on this topic. You can see a few events have posted. So let me focus in on one hour. And I will submit a new specimen. We'll say wonderful fall color and a great harvest this year. And then choose submit. Now that we've submitted that, let's go back to our dashboard and see what we see. Sure enough, wonderful fall color and a great harvest this year. Notice that it's in unprocessed. Now, why is that? Well, I have only deployed at this point the plant specimen microservice where the user can enter information or we can get it via a REST endpoint and the dashboard. I have not yet implemented the photo processor. So by definition, everything is sitting in photo in and nothing is sitting in photo exception or process just yet because the photo processor isn't live. So let's work on that application next. Remember, one nice thing about microservices is that they are independently scalable. And if we think about data entry and also a dashboard application, that's not likely going to need to scale a whole lot. But when, when we think of photo processing, resizing an image, adding watermarks, that's one that might need to scale quite a bit, which is why I'm representing it here with several different computers. The photo processor application, just like the dashboard application, is a very simple application that I built in a previous video. I'll point you to that if you're curious how it works, but a small application. We see the stuff that we need for Spring, like photo processor application and servlet initializer. Beyond that, all we really have is this photo processor class. As a matter of fact, this is a headless application. There's no user interface to it. All it is is a service that starts up when there's something on that topic or event hub, resizes the photo, and then goes back to sleep. That's it. We have our listener hooked up with this Kafka listener annotation. We have it hooked up to this process photo method. Now, normally in the original version, as you can see in GitHub, it receives a path from the topic or from the event hub, and then it creates a file object out of that, and it creates a location for a thumbnail file, which is where we're going to write a smaller version of this photo, and also it finds a watermark. 
Then it applies the watermark and it resizes the image in a catch block. If everything is successful, it goes to photo out. If something goes wrong, then we're going to hit the sketch block. We'll only hit the catch block if something goes wrong. And if that happens, we write this path to photo exception. That's the original design. Again, I don't want to deal with any kind of file I.O. here. That would be a separate thing to configure. So I, I ripped all that out and I just did a simple if test here. If the path contains photo, then we're going to write it to photo out, meaning success. If the path does not contain photo, then we're going to write it to photo exception. So little if test just to give us a little bit of different behavior. Also, it's really no longer a path. The variable is path because that's what it originally was intended to be. It's really this description. So it's a matter of what keyword do I put in the description to put it in the photo out or photo exception. Really just a few classes, pretty small, and I have already configured the application properties. Just as I demonstrated in a previous video on deploying a Spring Boot Kafka project to Azure Event Hub. So at this point, we're really ready to deploy. We've seen this part before. Let's do it one more time. Deploy to Azure Web Apps. I'm going to make a brand new application for this reason being the microservice where we enter our specimens is a separate application. Our dashboard is a separate, separate application and our photo processor will be a separate application. What's neat with this is we can start and stop them at different times and we can look at the impact on our event hub. So we'll go ahead and choose web app and we'll choose more settings. We need to hook this up to the resource group that contains our event hub. Name, plant photo processor at azurewebsites.net. Uh, go with the same as before. And then plan, once again, we'll stick with the free plan that we have before. And we choose OK and run. Just like before, this is going to take a while and I know you've already seen something deploy. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this now and just unpause once it's deployed. The deploy is successful and it's given us a URL. When I go to that URL, it currently shows that the application is stopped. Now, it will eventually start. We won't get a really glorious user interface because there is no user interface for this application, the photo processor. Remember, it's just doing a bit of headless work. Let's confirm that right now we still see our message on unprocessed. I'll refresh and we see it's still there. Once this application becomes available, in other words, once it stops loading, we'll go back and refresh our dashboard and we'll see if this item moves somewhere else. One thing unique about the photo processor that I'll point out while we're waiting is note that we do have a few more entries in our application properties because certain things we need to specify for the consumer, certain things for the producer. If we consider our Specimen Entry Microservice, it's only a producer because it's just putting those paths on the photo in topic or event hub. If we look at the dashboard, it's only a consumer because it's only reading from that event. But the photo processor has to go both ways, so we have both the consumer and the producer. You can verify this by looking at the color of the lines. The Plant Diary Microservice is only writing, the dashboard is only reading, and the photo processor is doing both. Now, what if the photo processor and the dashboard try to read the same message? Is there any way to lock these things out? Well, that is what the uh, group ID is for. Uh, the group ID says, I represent this group and this group only wants to read the message one time. So provided that you have a different group ID from somebody else, you and that other person can both read the message. But if you have multiple processors scaling up and you only want to read a message one time, then you can use the group ID and share that across multiple processors. Well, I did a bit of talking and we've come back now and we see that we get a 404, but that is actually okay. In this case, our application has started. It just doesn't have a user interface. Let's go back to our dashboard and refresh. And sure enough, you see that it went from unprocessed to exceptions once our photo processor started up. Remember we hard-coded some logic so that if the description contains the word photo, we're going to consider that a successful process. If not, it goes to exception. Sure enough, the message that we put on doesn't have the word photo, so it goes to exceptions. Let's add a new description. We'll say photo of a beautiful native shrub. And since I have 
Beautiful. Uh, since I have the word photo in there, we anticipate this will go somewhere else. So I hit submit. Didn't take too long this time. Once again, photo processor, we're not going to see anything there because it's just a background app. Now let me go and refresh. Refresh and take a look at this. You see that now our unprocessed item that we just created went to processed because it has the word photo. I can do this as much as I want. Photo of a rose. And we'll see that anything that says photo is going to go to process successfully. And if I say my backyard and submit, we'll go back, refresh our dashboard, and we'll see that anything that says photo is in processed. And then my backyard and wonderful fall color and a great harvest this year goes to exceptions. I I'm not enti entirely sure what's putting the null on there. Not terribly worried about it because I think we get the idea of what's happening. One more thing to consider. Since I have deployed these all as different applications, we can stop them and start them as different applications. So we take a look at the plant photo processor, and this is that one that is in the middle that's doing both the reads and the writes. Let me go ahead and hit stop. Remember, our other two applications are still running. The specimen application, where the user can enter things, and the dashboard application. We can confirm by simply refreshing these pages and confirming that they are still responsive, as we would expect. Just out of curiosity, if I go to the photo processor, this web app is stopped. You see it's a 403, it's no longer a 404. So now what happens when I say photo of my favorite shrub and submit, or I say wonderful spring bloom, and I hit submit. Let's go back and look at our dashboard and see what those look like. Well, they're in unprocessed, and that's not a big surprise because remember, our photo processor has stopped. So guess what? We have this unprocessed collection, which is really just photo in minus photo out and photo exception, and that tells us what's left over. Well, guess what? If that is a very large number, that's an indication that something has gone wrong. Maybe our photo processor it has stopped working, or maybe we need to scale it up or scale it out. We will know that by looking at this event hub and compare it to the other event hubs. What if we put some analytics or some kind of metrics on our event hub, and once it gets to a certain depth, we either automatically scale up or scale out, or if we can't do that, or we think the system is down, maybe we send a text message to our on-call support person to come take a look and see if something needs to be restarted. As a matter of fact, I think that is one of the best advantages of topics, event hubs, and queues, is the ability to monitor them, because that is the canary in the coal mine. It is the first thing to tell you when something has gone down. I worked in point of sale for many years of my career, and queues, topics, events, these are all very common if you think about how point of sale works with transactions, promotions, and sales, and even just getting data down to each retail location. And the first thing I would look at anytime something went wrong is how are the queues looking? How are the topics looking? Are there any that are abnormally backed up? And then normally that would tell me where to go and look for something wrong. I did this so much, I eventually just made a big map and a diagram and a key for everybody else to say, if this topic has more than five items on it, look at this item, it's probably down. Or restart this process, it's probably down. And eventually I made a whole flowchart that showed how to do it. So alerting, very important, and something that will really help us with our topics and events. Let's quickly check in with our Event Hubs dashboard on the Azure portal, and you'll see something that is interesting, which is you can see that our messages were published. It looks like eight published, and then 12 read, and then it looks like another four read. Why eight published and a total of 16 read? Remember our diagram, as we write something to photo in once, it gets read twice. So I'm not surprised to see that kind of number. Nonetheless, when I talk about monitoring and alerting, this is a good place to look. And as a matter of fact, you can use this events view to actually send events somewhere else. And that somewhere else could easily be a diagnostics tool. So this video has been a look at an event hub demonstration with three apps in one hub. And I want to credit a YouTube viewer for giving me the idea for this video. I have a video on Kafka and someone commented and said, really love the video. I'd love if you'd make more. I responded back and said, what do you want me to make? And the viewer said, 
it would be really neat to see different applications work together on Azure through Event Hub. And I thought, great idea. So I did the video. So thanks for that shout out. Here's the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.